Since the attacks on the World Trade Center, our next guest has made it her mission to raise the morale of Americans' defenders around the globe and here at home. Leanne Tweeden was part of the first group of civilian entertainers to enter Iraq after the fall of Saddam Hussein, and to date she has entertained troops through 16 USO tours, 14 of which took place in Iraq and Afghanistan. Perhaps better known to the American public for her appearance in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, I'm just reading what is written. Now, or the, as the host of the Poker After Dark, Ms. Tweeden is certainly no stranger to the military community. In 2008, she was honored by the USO with the Angela Harvey Heart of a Patriot Award nominated by Gary Sinze. The award was created expressly to honor those in the entertainment industry who have gone above and beyond in support of our troops, but also to honor those who have talent has reflected the spirit of American service members. Ms. Tweeden has flown with the Navy Blue Angels, skydived with the Army's Golden Knights, and she has visited Walter Reed and Bethesda Hospital so many times she says she simply lost count, but who's counting when it comes to visiting our heroes. She has spent the Thanksgiving holiday serving turkey to dinners to our troops in Afghanistan and has participated in the numerous opening ceremonies for USO and MWR centers all over the Middle East. The list of good works Ms. Tweeden has done in support of our service members, veterans and their family is certainly long and continuous. Therefore, the least we can do, ladies and gentlemen, is to thank Ms. Leanne Tweeden for her tremendous legacy of service to our country in our own way by presenting her the VFW 2011 Hall of Fame Award. Hall of Fame Award Gold Medal and Citation awarded to Leanne Tweeden in heartfelt recognition of her fervent love of country and indomitable American spirit that she expresses so dynamically while entertaining deployed troops. Her generous efforts to sustain and improve the morale of the United States service members through her USO tours are a reflection of her determination and patriotism as well as her enthusiastic and undying support for our military thus earning her the utmost respect and sincere appreciation of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, in witness whereof we have hereunto set our hands and the official seal of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States this 29th day of August, 2011, approved by the National Council of Administration, signed by Richard L. Eubank, Commander-in-Chief, and Alan Gunner Kent, Adjutant General. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, first off, I would like to thank uh, Commander-in-Chief Richard Eubank for inviting me here and giving me this, this award for the VFW on behalf of the VFW. And I would like to thank everyone in this room, all of the veterans who have served and all of the loved ones who have supported them throughout the years. Um, I stand before you as a grateful American, the daughter of a Vietnam veteran and the wife of my husband over here, Major Chris Doherty, who is a C-130 pilot who has deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so I not only support it, I live it myself as well. Uh, the work that the VFW does on behalf of our veterans who have served in foreign wars is second to none. Since 1899, you guys have worked tire tirelessly to secure the rights and benefits for our veterans with a strong, united voice and the support of almost two million members. Um, just a little backstory on myself. I've been a model and sportscaster uh, in Hollywood for about 20 years, and my views on things in the world are not quite the mainstream in Hollywood, but that doesn't stop us from giving our support. Uh, I grew up in Manassas, Virginia, where, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I do it with friends like Gary Sinise and John Voigt and all those people. We kind of bond tightly together. Uh, I grew up in Manassas, Virginia, where I learned from my father about uh, the USO. I was about eight years old when I found a shoebox full of old photos that he had uh, in the back of a closet, and we started going through them. Um, 
in his box, I found a little square photo, black and white photo with the little jagged edges uh, of a signed bikini clad photo of Raquel Welsh. And I said, wow, dad, you know, being from Virginia, I said, where did you get to meet this Hollywood movie star? And he said, well, she came to Vietnam. And I said, why would she go to Vietnam? He said, well, you know, there's this thing called the USO. And of course, I was like, the US what? What is, what is that? Uh, and now I understand what that is. And he said, Bob Hope brought Raquel Welsh with him to the jungles in Phan Rang in Vietnam. My dad was a B-57 mechanic. And uh, he said, you know, if for that hour or two, he goes, we were able to forget that we were in the middle of a war. My dad's first flight was leaving his country to serve for his country. It's funny, my dad talks about, my husband's a C-130 pilot, my dad's like, I flew on a C-130 to get to Vietnam. So he was very proud of that fact, very proud of my husband. But um, I didn't understand why Hollywood celebrities wanted to go visit people in a war zone. And I said, well, do people get shot at? He said, yeah, I think the plane they actually flew in on had little small arms fire bullet holes on it. And I, you know, right then I just kind of thought, wow, that's a little bit crazy, but all right, that thought stuck with me. And he said, you know, their job was to bring a little piece of home. I said, okay, my dad was a young teenager and I thought that was pretty cool. So as years went on, um, I finally started to model and, and got into the entertainment business uh, when I was about 18. And the very first time I got a call was right after 9-11 and they said, hey, would you like to do a USO tour? And it was one of my agents calling me and um, I just remember that feeling of that they asked me and, and as an American I thought, wow, this is how I can serve my country because I've never put on the uniform, but I love my country so much. My dad taught me what it was to be patriotic and to love my country and everything it stands for. We have the greatest country in the world and I said, this is the least I can do for the men and women putting themselves on the front line for us being a woman, in, especially traveling so much now to the Middle East, being a woman that's in the entertainment business that uh, I can own my own house, I can drive my own car, I can, I can work and I can do all the great things that we can do because of all the men and women who've served before them and, and those that continue to serve to, to secure our freedoms. So I immediately said yes, I didn't even ask when it was, I just said I have my passport, I'm ready to go wherever you send me hung up the phone and I called my father. I said, Dad, guess what I just got asked to do? They asked me if I wanted to go on a USO tour. And you know, fast forward now, I've been 14 times to Iraq and Afghanistan and then I did two other tours into the, into the Pacific to visit our troops. Thank you. You know, the, the, the clapping to me is still sort of a little bit uncomfortable because this is just something that I feel that is my duty as an American to, to give back and say thank you. And, you know, I, I may, I'm not the biggest celebrity, and a lot of you probably don't even know who I am, but in my little part of the world, this is something that I'm known for and, and that I hope that I inspire other people to go over. And people ask me, why do I keep going? And I said, well, you'll understand once you go the first time that it's just something that you feel like you, you're giving something of yourself. My dad always told me, he said, you know, the one thing that you give is your time and that's something that you can never give back. He goes, I don't care how many rich people are out there can write checks for millions of dollars, which is nice too. We all need money to make things happen. We understand that. But he said, you know, when you give your time, you're never going to get that part of your life back. So it's very important. And, uh, you know, my dad is always ingrained in that in me, uh, instilled that in my head and it's been ingrained in my brain forever. Um, if it wasn't for those USO tours, I never would have met my husband who, ironically enough, we were introduced by uh, another Air Force pilot who now serves in the Texas Air National Guard here. And uh, my husband's a C-130 pilot, like I said, he's been through 11 deployments um, on the war on terror, and he's flown 800 combat hours, over 4,000 hours in the plane. Um, he was active duty. When we decided to get married, I joked with him, I said, well, if we're gonna get married, I don't think that I can move every two or three years. So. He separated from the military after 10 and a half years and going to the Air Force Academy, and now he's a member of the California Air National Guard. So he is still serving in this past week, actually, my husband and I, um, every other day for five chalks, five different waves of C-130 planes. We sent our friends off to war to serve 
three to four months in Afghanistan. So it's something that's very close to home. My husband didn't have to go on this deployment, thank God, but he was willing to go if somebody had to back out for family reasons or for health reasons. But he'll be going on the next deployment, which will be probably in the next year. Um, and I always tell people when I visit them, when I visit the troops, or if I'm with family members, I say thank you for serving your country by supporting your loved one. Because I always say that you're the reason why they're fighting and they're the reason why they can't wait to come home. And as a wife that has lived through multiple deployments with my husband, I sleep with a laptop in my bed because of course they're on the other side of the world and I just want that quick email and the chime that says you've got mail that wakes me up in the middle of the night that lets me know he made it home safe. And I live that every time he's gone and I live it through my friends who are deploying every day still and until everyone comes home, like the USO slogan, we'll be there thinking about them, loving them, supporting them. And, you know, that's, these are just the veterans of, of my generation, but everyone sitting in this room, I cannot tell you how many times I've gone through airports and my dad wears his Vietnam veteran hat. And I, I literally try to thank, or if I see him in an airport, maybe I'll buy him lunch or whatever, but I always like to thank our veterans because, you know, I don't want kids in my generation to forget all the sacrifices that you guys have made for this country, the sacrifices of your friends that never made it home, and everything that you guys stand for in the greatest country in the world. And I'm so proud to be here today. I'm so honored to stand in front of you and to be in your presence. And I just want to thank you again for all of your service and your love and sacrifice for this country. So thank you very much. I'm so honored to be here today. And uh, I'll, I'll, this is one of the awards that I'll cherish and treasure for the rest of my life. Thank you very much.